Hi, and welcome to Parkinson's Disease Education. I purposefully chose a quiet place with little distractions to talk to you about today's topic, which is Lewy body dementia or dementia with Lewy bodies. Today we're going to unpack a little bit about what Lewy body dementia is, some of the risk factors in developing LBD, details on symptoms and, and treatment and so forth. I hope to keep this as brief as possible, but I hope you will enjoy this video and you'll get a lot out of it. And if you are a person suffering with LBD and or Parkinson's disease, I hope that this gives you some solace in knowing what's going on, knowing a little bit more about this, and maybe you didn't get this information from another healthcare professional already. If that's the case, I sincerely hope that this is informative and that this, this does spur you to further research on your own in terms of dealing with this disease. So let's get right into it. First of all, what is Lewy body dementia and how is it distinct from Parkinson's disease? It's actually very difficult to diagnose LBD because some of the physical limitations of LBD very closely mimic Parkinson's disease. In fact, Parkinson's disease can be a risk factor that can lead to LBD, which is even more confusing. First of all, Lewy body dementia is essentially because of or caused by protein aggregates called Lewy bodies that form in the brain and cause damage. Lewy bodies are formed by the protein aggregate alpha-synuclein, which in previous videos we've covered the role of alpha-synuclein uh, or at least the presence of alpha-synuclein in Parkinson's disease and even in its diagnosis. So the fact that Lewy body uh, dementia is caused by alpha-synuclein is very intriguing and also very enlightening. Parkinson's disease in and of itself can be a risk factor that can lead to LBD as well as other disorders such as REM sleep behavioral disorder. REM sleep behavioral disorder we've talked about in a previous video that I'll link above and that is a condition that can be associated with PD, but can also be a hallmark of Lewy body dementia. So again, signs and symptoms of Lewy body dementia. As a typical rule, the cognitive issues will develop first and then the physical limitations tend to follow afterwards. One of the hallmarks of LBD is visual hallucinations. In fact, up to 80% of persons diagnosed with LBD will have some form of visual hallucinations that need to be treated with medication. It can even be hallucinations of an auditory uh, or an olfactory nature where you smell and hear things that aren't there. Like Parkinson's disease, you can also have a direct reduction in acetylcholine in the brain. And as you may recall from previous videos we've done, talking about cognitive changes in PD, again, I'll link that above, we've talked about how acetylcholine plays a role in attention and memory. And LBD directly results in a decrease in acetylcholine and also in dopamine, which is what will lead to the movement disorder part of the, dis the disease as it develops. So in addition to the hallucinations, there can also be present of unpredictable changes in alertness and attention, as well as in wakefulness from day to day and even throughout the day. In addition to that, thought processes can be illogical and unclear. Severe loss of thinking abilities can interfere with activities of daily living. So folks with LBD really need a lot of help with activities of daily living as the disease progresses. So the movement problems with LBD can be very similar or almost exactly the same as Parkinson's disease. You've got rigidity and stiffness, balance problems, a shuffling slow walk, frozen stance, tremoring or shaking, balance problems, repeated falls, I may have said balance already, stooped posture, loss of coordination, masked facial expression, difficulty swallowing, and a weak voice. Now to the outsider that would look just like Parkinson's disease, but in fact this may progress later rather than first. Whereas in Parkinson's disease the movement disorder tends to happen first and then if dementia is developed, which isn't always guaranteed, it tends to happen later. Sleep disorders are very common with LBD. Among the most common are, as we mentioned before, REM sleep behavioral disorder, excessive daytime sleepiness, insomnia, and restless leg syndrome. In terms of behavior and mood changes, tend to see similarities to other forms of dementia, but I'll mention them anyway. You tend to have depression, anxiety, apathy, agitation. You can even have delusions and paranoia. That can be really difficult, especially when you're living with a loved one with LBD. Again, similar to Parkinson's disease, you can also have changes in body temperature, blood pressure regulation issues, dizziness, 
frequent falls, sensitivity to heat and cold, sexual dysfunction, urinary incontinence, constipation, and poor sense of smell. <clears throat> so again, in terms of term, in terms of the pun, in terms of terminology, <clears throat> no, seriously, uh, when it comes to the term Lewy body dementia, it really refers to two related diagnoses: dementia with Lewy bodies and Parkinson's disease dementia. And honestly, the difference between the two is mainly which symptoms come first, the cognitive or the physical or the movement limitation disorders. So how do we treat Lewy body dementia? There's no cure, but there's a lot you can do to improve quality of life, even as the disease process progresses. The first advice I have is assembling a team because it takes a village. So you're going to want all the therapies involved, physical, occupational, and speech therapy, or speech language pathology. You're gonna want a neurologist, particularly a movement disorder specialist, and probably you're gonna want psychology or psychiatric help because that could come in the form of counseling or a psychiatrist to help prescribe medications for the psychotic symptoms of LBD. As things progress, you may consider hospice care because quality of life is crucial. Hospice care can greatly improve quality of life, especially as you head towards a transition. But hospice care is not meant to be only right at the end of life. It could be for multiple months or even years in some cases. So the only thing to consider with hospice care is you can't get the same benefits as you can if you're not on hospice. For example, if you're not on hospice care, you can get rehabilitation, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech, and so forth. Whereas with hospice care, you're not getting restorative care or rehabilitation. You're really just getting palliative care, medication regulation, equipment that you need um, for you and your family, and so forth. In terms of medications, Parkinson's disease medications can help with LBD, particularly because of the dopaminergic issues. In addition to that, though, you'll need other medications prescribed by your physician for some of the cognitive and psychiatric issues we talked about, including the visual hallucinations, sleep disorders, and so forth. As with other Parkinson's plus syndromes, a movement disorder specialist is really the person you need to be seeing to help manage all the potential side effects and interactions that medications can have when treating all these multiple symptoms that can come along with LBD. And the same goes with Parkinson's disease itself. So again, I'll put in a plug for that. And again, I'm gonna link a video as to why you should be seeing a movement disorder specialist over a general neurologist. For more information about Lewy body dementia, and I'll share the link of where this information came from from the National Institutes of Health. I would also recommend looking into the Lewy Body Dementia Association. It's not a large organization, but it could be really helpful to get support and information. I'll leave those links in the description for your disposal. As always, thank you for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about this video and what your experience has been if you have LBD or if you lived with a loved one who has LBD. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hope you have a great week. As always, be empowered.